Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Candice and I will be your host for the session. Today's topic of discussion is how municipalities are surviving working from home during COVID-19. Thank you for taking out time out of your busy day and joining us this afternoon. Before I hand over to our next speaker, just some friendly house rules. To ensure a smooth session, all attendees will remain muted. Should you have any questions, these may be asked in the Q&A section, which appears on your screen. Depending on how we are doing on time, we will answer some of these questions. If there are any questions we are unable to answer, we will compile a report of these and send it out in the next few days. I will now hand over to Sher Chapel, who is our General Manager of Musical Solutions and has been working with electronic rate systems since 2003. Over to you, Cher. Thank you, Candice. Yeah. Hello, all. <clears throat> As Candice says, um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, yeah, very special people um, working in council environment. And yeah, a very oh, difficult time. Can you believe it's been a year <laughs> since uh, the nation state of disaster was declared and was followed by a level five lockdown? This resulted in cabin fever for many of us, <laughs> including me. Oh, it was a, a big adjustment to get used to only being allowed out about um, a few hours of, of a day. But this also closed councils and businesses. But the property market is the backbone of our economy. So a plan had to be made to keep the wheels turning, okay? COVID-19 presented many challenges for many South African municipalities with resource constraints and remote working, often impacting the ability to function and provide essential services to citizens. Those best set up for success has been the ones that have been able to step outside their comfort zone and embrace technology and work from home, okay? Um, the whole of LexisNexis was set up to work from home, like within a week. And the city of Cape Town also put a plan into action, which worked and is still working. So I'd like to intro Mr. Evert Kutzer, who I'm sure many of you know from our previous face-to-face -face meetings, where we have shared ideas and policies to help service delivery and going forward. Mr. Kutzer has been a great ambassador of the electronic process. And as you were here today, how he managed the city volumes and was able to still supply um, really good service. So, okay, I'd like to hand over to Mr. Kutzer and so he can share his success stories with you. Okay. Good day, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Um, Candice, I presume you are going to present the, the two or three slides um, that we are going to discuss uh, today. Um, for, for my colleagues in the, in the other metros, the other councils, um, yeah, um, it, it's, been, it's been a bit tough in the beginning. Uh, I can only imagine on your side, if I look what happened uh, on our side, um, with a with a bigger resources and infrastructure, but uh, the president uh, gave us very little time uh, to prepare. Um, I was actually away on a, on a road trip in the Sierra Mountains uh, when I think it was a Monday or the Tuesday night, and he said Friday is lockdown, so I had to pack up, cut the trip short, and make sure that we are kind of prepped for for what is coming. So today, I just want to. Because I was asked just to, you know, talk about what we did, what we are still doing, and what we can do uh, going forward, the pros, the cons uh, of working from home. Uh, but in in a nutshell, uh, to sum everything up, uh, from an electronic platform perspective, uh, working from home uh, is fantastic. Um, but yeah, as is, as we go through the slides, uh, you will see. Um, what I'm specifically referring to. Uh, Kenneth, if you can go to, to the first slide, please. Yeah, uh, just we wanna talk about, you know, health issues, um, what it was and what it's now, staff, staff morale, staff uh, attendance, you know, the setting up to work, 
the work from home um, changes or I, I, I say policy. I want to talk about uh, what my agreement was with the staff and what the city is doing now or trying to do. Uh, we can look at productivity and stats. I know uh, Candace has got some stats that she wants to show. Um, then the lessons uh, have resulted in, in changes, we, you know, streamlining the process. We have picked up, uh, we have learned a lot from COVID. Um, some of the lessons or what I call it, you know, finding where we had a shortcoming, we could fix others are, I'm busy doing. And then just for the way forward to go more electronic is as possible as we can. And then in the end of the day, you know, we can question, answer, chat about whatever uh, you want to. So uh, Candice, the next slide, please. Uh, just, just on the health uh, matter, um, you know, especially uh, with the, our head office um, in the civic center in Cape Town, in the center of town, uh, where I have an office, I had an office in, in one of our Plumstead buildings, as well as in the Belleville Civic Center. Um, traf, staff traveling, you know, private taxi, bus, train. Um, you know, the, you always come in touch uh, with other people. You know, people, as you know, about the trains look like squashed on top of each other. Um, so there was no, the social distancing never existed. Um, laughing and breathing and sneezing in somebody's presence uh, was not a problem. So uh, I must say is, is that uh, with this isolation, if you want to call it in working from home, uh, I will explain a bit more a bit later about uh, why I got isolation like that. Um, you know, it, it prevented the people from, from, from getting in contact with many others uh, that are sick. Um, you know, social distancing, uh, being applied, you know, wearing a mask, uh, in general, uh, mixing, coming in contact with other people, you know, for them having a cold or a flu or whatever is nothing, but it impacts more on you. So as you will know yourself uh, from staff, um, there's regularly staff on sick leave. Um, then also, as I said, with a train, the bus, the taxi, there's no risk. And, and also very important on what I picked up on my side, uh, the absence due to health reasons has reduced drastically. You know, before staff member will say, oh, you know, getting up, I'm not feeling so well, so I'm gonna stay at home. Now, uh, I might not feel so well in any case, uh, but if he doesn't go to the doctor, he can still work in between the rest of it and, and whatever the case may be. So. We, we don't have that many lost man hours. We, we don't have that, our sick leave record looks much better um, because they found it better to work in their own home environment where they can basically sit in their pajamas if they want to, uh, get up in the morning, have breakfast, work in their pajamas, have a shower, put in pajamas and go to bed. Um, so yeah, from, from a health perspective, uh, I think the isolation um, uh, is great. Um, putting apart, not talking about COVID now, I'm just talking about people working from home. Um, the, the people's approach or the people's physical mental health is also different because they're more in a, in a well-known, comfortable environment. Um, and, uh, you know, there's less stress uh, about the kids and the kids to school and the kids to crash and picking them up and giving them lunch, etc. So from a health perspective, uh, we I can give this a, a big tick as well as a plus. Then on the matter of, of my staff, um, I have all my staff working from home. Uh, when we went into lockdown from that Friday, the 27th, I, on the Thursday, afternoon uh, I already had a few staff members up and running from home um, those that uh, we had up and running first uh, we gave them all laptops uh, we handed in their computers um, and, and it's purely because of I still believe a laptop works better than a normal computer you have better zoom and teams facilities with a camera etc um, etc et so um, in the end of the day, they all, so gradually, uh, April was uh, quite a few added and the last bunch was added in May uh, because we, we, we could not get laptops because at the stage there was no laptops to be purchased in this country uh, because the, the boat was still lying in China. Um, 
we told him we allowed him to take the PC from work, take it home. And for that, we had to go procure 4G dongles, which they used uh, in, instead of um, internet. Um, so it was also the procurement of the dongle. So that those two facts uh, had a bit of a negative impact. By But by mid-May, around about day, just after that, uh, I got 95 staff members and all of them were, were working from home. There were some of them that um, prepared to, to work with their own Wi-Fi, this fiber uncapped, because uh, I found it was more relying, reliable and quicker and faster. Um, but they, they had a choice to pick. Do they want to use their own uh, internet or do they want to dongle? Uh, because at that stage, uh, and it still is the case, the city did not remunerate them for, for, for using their own Wi-Fi. So, uh, but being allowed uh, to work uh, at home in the familiar surroundings and, and they're more relaxed, uh, you know, the edginess, their stress levels is down, they more peaceful rest at home because as the one lady said, Mr. Kutz, I get up, I work, my kids wake up, I wash their face, give them breakfast. And um, after that, um, I go work, come lunchtime, I feed them again, I play with them a bit. Uh, so. She, and, and I want to explain to you how we get to our eight-hour day. So they are more relaxed. Um, they, they are more committed. Um, and, and the dedication is also different. You know, previously, there's no phones ringing on their desk. There's nobody coming in and say, I've got an issue or a problem. There is a process to deal with those kind of queries, which is working. So uh, they can focus uh, on their work. Um, and as I said, also very important, if I can just go to the previous slide again quickly, but the one point I still want to make is that um, we we don't have late comings, um, health, absence, issues. Um, we, you know, because staff has to clock in at eight. We know what the transport is. Well, in Cape Town, at least, trains is always late. Trains stand for two hours at the station. Trains get cancelled, traffic jams, accidents. Um, you know, taxings uh, killing each other, et cetera, et cetera. So, yes, we, we the, the, the late coming has reduced uh, even the leave request for half days because they are in a more relaxed environment. They don't need uh, to have all the leave that they use to, to take a break from, from work. Thanks, Candice. Uh, I can flip over. Um, as I said, when lockdown came in March, um, as I said earlier, was limited with equipment, laptops, and 4Gs, uh, but it was only those ones that was critical in our process. But we we spread it evenly over the four or five sections uh, in my area. The bigger rollout, as I said, started in April, um, and when we got to 7th, 11th, 13th of May, about coming back to the office. Um, I was told I can give my staff the choice because management, we felt that at that stage, we get more from the staff. Um, our performance is better uh, because the staff is at home. So they had a choice to stay at home or, or come back to the office. Uh, of course, all of them said they, they prefer to, to stay at home. It's, it's beneficial to them. And as I said, is where we didn't have a laptop, uh, we gave them uh, their own PCs, and where there's no internet, we gave them the dongles. Also, as I said about the Wi-Fi, the internet, they had a choice to use their own, out of their own free will. They were not given an ultimatum, say, if you want to, you will do that. Uh, the choice was theirs. Um, and as I said, it's because of connectivity, and you know how the Okay, well, the municipal systems and services and things work. It, it sometimes you have a bit of problem with uh, connectivity, um, and then the the dongles that you get is not always very reliable. Um, and, and a lot of stuff uh, is on internet, uncapped as well. So then we also, as I said, is uh, staff when they went home, we allowed them to take certain other assets home as well. Uh, some took uh, the chair. They chair with some took uh, pens on paper to work on um, whatever they needed within reason. Um, I allowed and 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 I signed off on it. Um, and the the what we are continuously daily improving on is this whole thing of staff management. 
um, and 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 staff supervision, which we do via via Skype. Okay, the city is still pre-1994, they still use Skype and not Zoom or, or, or Teams. So Skype, as you know, I presume the others also have a status that can see if you're online, offline, if you're busy or if you're away. So the staff was told that they must always use the Skype for any interaction, rather even than the email. So everybody knows where you are and what is going on. Um, the meetings that we're holding is via Skype. You schedule a meeting people uh, get the link to join in. Uh, the only thing, as I said, is I would like more um, uh, visual of, of my staff, um, meaning that those with the laptop, some do have cameras that they got on their own. Um, we are busy with headsets. Uh, I've purchased 25 and I've now ordered another 40. And after the last batch, uh, I want uh, to put a proposal forward that we get these cameras. Some of the staff bought their own out of their own pocket. Uh, that is uh, if we cannot get more laptops because I feel um, it works fine. It's not a problem, but uh, my personal opinion is I like to look at the person in the eye uh, when I talk to them so I can see they're listening to me or they're not listening to me. Um, so yeah, um, and then I said uh, it's all the 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 work goes uh, electronically. The meetings, uh, you know, what we do at night is is you when the staff log in in the morning, um, their work will be there for the day, so you can measure uh, the output. So uh, coming to the work from home, oh, let's call it my policy, is that the staff must do the eight hours. That is what they get paid for. They can uh, work whenever, however they feel like within reason, but uh, their work is, is sent to them, uh, is allocated uh, at night, or of course I got one or two uh, functional managers that work late. There's one or two that prefer to get up very early in the morning uh, and then they will hand out the work. Now some task is, is like a, a spreadsheet, other task is like a workflow that they will be say 30 race clearance applications they, where the municipal can must be created. It goes to a certain team and you allocate it to a staff member. Um, so they can do it. The agreement, what I have with them is they can do it any way they want to. They can get up at six and do it. They can get up at five. All I want them to do is, is the, the, the workload that I give them uh, represents a full eight hour day. So if they get up at six and they finish at at two or three, it's fine by me. The hours that they log is the normal eight hours, uh, which we also do uh, by electronically. Um, and then the stats for work that was done. So if I gave them a target output required of 50 um, by cutoff time, which is, you know, four o'clock, five o'clock, it depends on the functional manager. Every staff member must provide their functional manager with, with their output and their stats by that time to make sure if I gave you 50 and your target was 50, that you did 50. Because my uh, agreement with them is, is if you work, you do your work, then it's fine, you can stay at home. But if you do not meet your daily target, you will be called back to the office. All right, so, so I have um, two staff members, uh, two of my children, I would call them, uh, that is working from the office. Um, because there was too many reasons and stories about why they couldn't do this and couldn't do that. We had everything tested. We had to make sure it's not that we didn't believe them, but as I said, they are two of my children. I have a few of them. And so we then said to them, okay, you can call back to the office and they need to do their work from the office until we, we, we feel they will get an understanding that they know what it's about now. Um, that's why I've, I've out of all my office spaces, I, I, I got three hubs. I got one in, in Cape Town Civic, where I got four PCs set up. Um, Plum said I got three, and in Belleville, I've got four. So, so if the staff member has a problem with, with their internet and they cannot connect, they get called back to the office. Um, if there is electricity down for a day or two, we, we call them back to the office. They have to come work from office. Or if the PC, like we all know, you know, PCs are, are made to be replaced. 
they have problems and while IT is doing uh, the check on the, the audit on the PC, uh, we will also call them back um, to the office and they, they will work, they comply with all um, COVID regulations, uh, facilities management, uh, usually assist because I got no staff at, at, at the office, they will assist with a with a COVID protocol of mask and temperature and those kind of things, uh, and make sure the offices are clean, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, yes, uh, they will do. You can measure your eight hours, um, and as I said, is they can do it whatever they want to, um, as long as I give them work for eight hours and they do that work. They can start as I said at five in the morning if they want to, but the work for the day uh, needs to be done. Okay, thanks. Uh, can next one? Okay, as I said earlier, uh, you know the staff is is more is happier. Uh, they're more comfortable at home in their own environment. Uh, my problems, even for some of my children, is not there anymore. As I said, attendance in terms of coming late to work is not there. The number of times phoning in and say, "Oh, I'm not feeling so lucky. I'm going to stay at home," because it was easy to stay at home has improved um, I, in certain areas. I've got certain targets uh, that need to be done for the day. Um, I was going to increase it um, oh, before COVID 2019. I had actually the union on my neck for, for what I was going to do. And at the moment, the, the staff is doing it out of their own without me having to ask yet or uh, discuss the increase in output. So, and, and the daily work is monitored. Uh, if you know the average of doing, say an escalated matter is 40 a day and that's what the person will get. Um, what we also do on our side is um, in the morning, the functional manager for your specific area will have the stats when he or she logs in of what is on the table or on a desk to be done for the day, how many of function A, B, C, D, or E, uh, according to the daily target, for example, say there's 300 accounts, uh, they do 50 accounts a day, so uh, functional manager A needs six people. So if he's got 10 staff, then he will inform the other functional manager and say, staff A, B, C, and D, uh, is going to come work for you today. I don't have work for him or her. And then that functional manager will allocate a day's so eight hour work to them. So the staff always stay busy. Um, we don't have the issue of where staff is sitting idle, which we had in the beginning before we put a few processes in place. Um, so yeah, so and, and a lot of them are multi-skilled across board. They can work on the rights clearance side. They kind of work on the refund side and it can work on a deeds ownership chain so they can they can interact um, and um, so as you can see is uh, um, the number of stats so which means is if you look at the stats there i must actually show this to my cfo that can you see i'm, I'm working um, uh, we're doing our numbers is coming in our percentage of our service level agreement i did uh, I did a rerun on January. It was uh, high up in the 90% is issued within, in terms of our process, in terms of within the SLA, uh, January, because as you can see, the numbers is a little bit lower. Um, it was also in the high 90s. Um, so, and you can see we already by 24 March, we're standing at 5,400. So I know our numbers is high, most, maybe higher than some of yours, but uh, we have a lot of lately of, of, of um, call it uh, sectional titles. Um, we have a lot of development in, in low cost housing. Um, so we people here in town, they tend to consolidate three or four urban with old houses. They break it down and they build a four story uh, sectional title scheme with a lot of units. So, so yeah, our volume is high and of course, uh, due to the, the the delay with the deeds of a site in registering uh, for a few months, um, my extensions went up from about 50, 60 a month to over a thousand. So working from home, I, I still compete. I still make my targets, um, especially in terms of the SDBIP performance indicators for the for the mayor and the, and the city manager. 
So, and that's all done electronically with, with no barrier uh, at the office. Um, just coming to lessons, um, uh, why we have made some changes to streamline is that uh, we, my, the staff were prepped, uh, they were geared, but knowing now, what I know now, if I know then, I would have rather replaced or issued all the staff or more of the senior staff, the critical staff with the laptops. Uh, the PCs is fine, uh, but I have found the laptops work better, but there's nothing wrong. Um, out of my 95, I think there's about 30, 35 that's got laptops. The rest is use their PC. Um, and also that when we do, when I ordered now the headsets, uh, which there was a old tender issue, that's why it took so long, is that to get the, we got the Bluetooth earphones with a mic and everything, but you get the set that comes with a little camera or, but now they found is to buy the little camera separate is going to be a bit uh, cheaper. Um, so, so we are trying now. So, so those are the kind of things that, uh, as I said, is we had three days, four days, uh, we had to, to set up and get ready and to be able to work from home. Um, and then, of course, now with these headsets that we've got with a mic, you can download or link your office phone to, to your laptop or to your PC. So, um, but you can decide if you want to give the access or not. So on my side, um, the senior certain staff that has, of course, the functional managers and the senior supervisors has got. So you go into your Skype team, Zoom, whatever you use, and you, you dial from there, and it is as if you're dialing from the office. So you will get your account at the end of the month to say, you know, make so many calls. As I said, a lot of staff don't have it because they don't need uh, a telephone to talk to the outside, uh, to attorneys, developers, or whoever. Um, so, yeah, you, that's why what is also the nice thing, because previously you had to struggle with a mail or people had to WhatsApp on their own phone, their own data, and then you always had uh, this complaint thing about the, the data, which I can understand, uh, you know, data is expensive, so is airtime. Um, but it's to go with a, with a full package. So, but because of tender issues and having to wait in different suppliers, uh, we're doing it down at different stages. As I said, it's my first target is now to give everybody a headset. And the next one will be to, to get cameras for those where I cannot uh, find uh, laptops. I have did a motivation to the director and the CFO that uh, going forward, uh, when they replace PCs, not to replace it with another PC, but to rather purchase a laptop in the end of the day. Okay, uh, again, this next one. Right, so just before I come to what, I don't know, I think it's the last slide or nearly the last. Um, the city is, is now really looking at some of the policies uh, in terms of um, uh, time and attendance. Uh, in terms of uh, allowances, uh, as, as an example, you know, in terms of time and attendance to be a bit more flexible, uh, but to make sure that the staff is doing the eight hours and it is mine, my functional managers and senior supervisors responsibility to make sure they work for the eight hours. Uh, I've been known to be the, the nice uh, head of a department uh, in revenue or in, in other departments because I don't tell you to sit in front of your PC or laptop from eight till half past four. You can, with permission, you can go to the shop quickly. You can go do something if you want to, as long as you have the permission. So you are covered uh, and protected in terms of uh, insurance, et cetera, so something happened to you um, and that uh, you complete your day's work. Very important. So so other people as, as, as much stricter, but I, I don't uh, believe in that. That is not my approach. The other thing is also they're looking at the allowances because they've realized that the dongles, um, the rental plus the usage is, is in some cases, depending on the job that the person is doing, is very pricey, is very expensive. So uh, they did an investigation and they found that if you give an X amount as an allowance to a staff member, then even those staff that cannot afford uncapped 
Wi-Fi or internet at the moment can have internet uncapped in the house with a minimum speed of 10 megabytes a second. And it will be a massive saving on, on the cost currently of a dongle and, and um, of, the, of the rental. Um, so yeah, uh, it, there's, there's various uh, options. So I know they have, they have investigated, they are compiled the report. Uh, the other thing that we also looked at is the cost. You know, if you look at the cost of, uh, like an outside, we have a building, there's a rental. You, you know what the rental cost will, uh, in, in a year, it literally runs in, into millions, especially if you have big office space, there is the cleaning service, there's cleaning material, uh, there is coffee, tea, sugar, toilet paper, you name it, what you want um, is, is being used. Um, I had the stage, I had to cut down on, on, on printing paper. Uh, because I don't know why some people like to print everything. Um, I And at the moment, uh, um, they asked me the other day if my people is working because what, what I ordered before, um, I order in the last six months what I used to order in a month. Because uh, printing is reduced, so there's another cost saving that your bosses need to take into account. Um, and as I said, it's, 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 the other factor is, is the man hours uh, and the resources. So, and of course, also, you know, when school start, uh, my stationary budget used to hit the ceiling. But if you take at the bigger picture, you, you take a, at the cost if somebody works from office uh, and your resources, uh, putting aside anything else uh, and your staff health, the benefit uh, to their mindset, uh, it is only a plus plus and another big plus to, to, to work from home. So um, just coming to back to, to, to the, the way forward and more certificates is that we have learned a lot uh, during COVID-19. We ourselves have found little loopholes, gaps, where things could have been done better um, on an automated electronic platform. Um, so we are busy with the project on my side. Uh, we just had our, our SteerCom meeting this morning where we will go live with, the, with another few developments. It's the loss of the project in the end of uh, April um, for project sign-off in the middle of May. Um, but due to COVID and the way business has changed, I already started my PID for the next project. Of course, things that we've picked up in, in COVID, we, we can do better. Uh, it's not so much only in, in, in the matter of turnaround time to issue a rates clearance certificate. It involves the refunds on the final accounts. It involves changing the ownership, making sure that the seller account is finalized and the owner is built. Um, it's about being able to, to extract the, the stats and reports to make sure that you know everything is, 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 is accounted for, everything is reconciled. Um, you, you move certain steps in your process uh, which I, as I said, is I will do some now and I will do some of it later. Um, if there were certain implementations done, which we asked for, oh, Mr. Chapel, you must help you now, four, five years ago, um, I think a lot of the teach office issues that we had, um, the majority, I feel, could have been avoided because we would have picked up where a registration did not take place or it took place, but we never received the registration notice, um, uh, which we found now. So yeah, a lot of lessons. Um, but uh, we, as, as you heard in the beginning, I, I'm pro, pro, very pro electronic and automation. Um, uh, we had, had eight manual offices where attorneys could submit manually. Um, now I only have one left. Um, and I'm cutting slowly but surely down on him before I get the politicians on my neck. Um, but they just for the odd one, as I said earlier, most of my applications uh, is electronic, um, especially when you look at, at our area. We, I don't know, some of you, most of you will know Cape Town. We run from Simonstown in the south up to Atlantis, Bloberg in the north, right down to, to Gordons Bay. So our area is, is very big. So the attorney can, can basically sit in his office and he can do everything. And I don't have to, to see him unless he maybe wants to invite me for lunch, but, but he, can, uh, he can apply 
Uh, he can make his electronic payment. He can submit his documents and proof of payment electronically. We have our validations in our system. There is constant communication to the attorney if everything is A-OK -okay, or even if there's a problem. Uh, we will process the application. Uh, we will issue the certificate. He receives it electronically. Uh, he prints it, signs it, electronic digital signature from our side, and he go to the DS office to go lodge and, and to register. Um, going forward, one of the things that uh, a few, well, it's actually part of this um, Doing Business in South Africa project uh, that is uh, run by National Treasury and the World Bank, um, is that the DS office need to come up to par electronically so that we can interact electronically uh, to even make the process better and also to be able to interact with home affairs in, in terms of fingerprints and, and passport numbers and ID numbers and photos, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, we continuously from our side, we're doing developments to improve what we call the end-to-end -end process of the property value chain. Uh, that is now where the subdivision gets handed in uh, the application by town planning. It gets circulated, approved, the section 137 issued, the new urban created or the sectional title scheme created until where the attorney applies and until the ownership is changed and we've done the refund and we've closed off the process. Uh, Sher can talk a bit about some of this uh, maybe other certificates. I know she's busy discussing with town planning on the section 137. Um, they also have their own, like we have what we call the RCAP system is what we call my system in SEP. They have uh, what they call the dam system, which is also uh, even they, the, the architects, uh, everybody they need to register and they can only submit electronically. There's no more pieces of paper and plans getting lost. And then from there, it's an automated workflow from, from one section to the other until the, the developer will get a message to say, you know, it's been approved or your building plans has been approved. Um, so yeah, um, if it wasn't for this electronic platform, um, I most probably would not have been sitting here. Um, most probably been in uh, Stuckland somewhere or, you know, whatever the case may be, because I can. I got another section that was allocated to me. One of our uh, housing sections. Uh, it's called. We call them revenue housing. Um, they were allocated to me. Don't know why, but they are fully, fully, totally manual paperwork. And and the first thing I was fighting for, and we're busy with that now, is at least to get the documentation electronic because now it's all about paper and files. Uh, the the sale gets done in an area office by a housing office. Then that file must be sent to, to my office where it must be kept until the attorney comes and says, okay, we have the AOK, -okay, we can transfer the property. To find the documents is an issue. To find files is always an issue because we, we, we are quite a big area. So um, the first step was to, to make sure that we can get going forward all documentation at least available and accessible to all that need to on, on an electronic path. So uh, if I still had to work that paper way uh, with the volumes and, and the problems and the issues, then yeah, I would have needed a much more, another hundred or three staff on, on my side. So um, I know I ran through it very quickly. Maybe I also spoke too much. She warned me and so did uh, uh, Liz. Uh, and I need to, to not to talk too much, but um, from my side, that is it. Uh, I don't know, uh, Candice, if you want to switch over the, oh yeah. And uh, this is the last slide. So I'm going to take my pretty face away and, and keep quiet and let you talk about the questions and answers. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Just just one question. Um, if there's anybody here from the garden route or maybe from Frenable Saldana, um, I am uh, available on contract basis uh, for a few months because I, I, I tend to leave the city uh, hopefully soon. So yeah, um, <laughs> um, uh, Mosul Bay, Eta, talk there to Chris, as a taste see him, tell him um, I can do with a break, four months contract, I'll come sit you, hold your hand, whatever you want me to do, and uh, then I can get rid of the city on my back. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kutza, for that insight on how city of Cape Town. So um, I just want to touch on our new transfer certificates. 
And I want to congratulate Blomfete, who has joined us, yeah, Jolene, um, for the push and the shove and the help uh, with doing business in South Africa and National Treasury. We are live now with the transfer certificate. And because Bloemfontein did so well um, I, in proving their stats and their turnaround time on the electronic platform, we are now looking at all certificates that can be generated from time planning. So we are going to go live with um, the zoning cert, um, but most of all for Jolene and Bloemfontein, your construction permit. Yeah, that's next in the line. Um, we are going to be passing a zoning cert electronically um, and your occupation certificate as well electronically um, during the course of the year. So as Mr. Kutzer said, we have learned um, electronic is the way to go. Uh, we've also learned that the end, we only did the back part of, of the whole story. So yeah, it's going to be exciting to get involved in the front end with town planning um, and putting all of those actions on the electronic platform. So. Thank you, Jolene. <laughs> Thank you, Shan. Thank you, Mr. Kotsa. Um, Mr. Kotsa, we have a question. Um, if you can maybe just answer that one for us. Um, will the deeds office consider changing the validity date of the rates clearance certificate? <laughs> um, Yes, can this, uh, we are trying uh, from our side. Um, we're pushing uh, hard. You, you, uh, well, I don't know if you can recall when this whole issue about 120 days and 60 days were, were forced upon us. Um, those people that initiated, they now claiming they don't know what we are talking about. Um, now everybody is blaming everybody. The peace of us is blaming the law society and vice versa, and the chief registrar, she says one side. Um, but um, yes, uh, we are now from here from Cape Town, um, they already, the Cape Town Attorney Association, they sent me documents, they already went to court. Um, and also um, we are now, well, I am from my side, uh, in terms of this doing business uh, project, um, trying to uh, push national treasury and the World Bank to assist because uh, Cogta and those places, uh, you know, it takes, I've been, we've been canvassing for how long to change it. Um, but every time you talk to somebody different, um, that's why I'm not a big fan of them. Um, and you, you, you need to have an issue. So, so what we're doing, um, we're trying to push the pressure on from that angle to get them to take it back to, to 120 days. I even asked, I spoke to the chief registrar myself. I, I took the gap. I apologize to her for being forward. I sent the emails. Um, I've sent the mails and communication via the South African Law Society. Um, and I said purely for, at least for the period of COVID to change it back. But then she said, no, uh, Cogta and Saga, they agreed to changing it. I went to them, they said, no, that these office insisted on the change. So then we, we would have avoided a lot of the problems with, with extensions. Like I said, our extensions uh, were getting out of control. Um, and also we would not have had so much problem, especially with the deeds office in Cape Town closed at the stage just about every second day for two or three days. Uh, now at least they, they closed quite a few times, but at least it's just for a day, maybe, maybe a day and a half. So yes, we, we are trying from our side. Um, I just think if it comes, uh, more, the more councils that uh, jump onto the bandwagon, it's going to put more weight behind it. But for my involvement in this doing business project, uh, I'm abusing my um, uh, access to them to try and get them to put pressure um, on, on the DC office to change so we can go back to 120 days. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Kotsa. Um, yes, and just to confirm what she is saying, we have received a circular from the deeds office confirming that we, um, they now, um, all deeds offices are now accepting electronically signed um, transfer certificates. So that is just confirmation. Um, we don't seem to have any further questions, Mr. Kotsa, and we just would like to thank you once again for your time. Um, Sorry. Yes, Mr. Kutsa? Yes, if I can interrupt you. I don't see uh, Heta 
she's not here from Muscle Bay, is she? And I was looking for a contract job there, but, but in any case, it's fine. I will send a direct message. <laughs> <It's my pleasure. laughs> uh, I hope everything that I rambled off um, made some sense. Um, and um, as I said, if anybody needs um, or needs to know something or maybe an explanation, bigger, better, or how the process is put in together, uh, I don't mind helping. They can run it via LexisNexis, and then we can have a discussion on the matter. Thank you so much, Mr. Kotze. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of today's session. We would like to thank each and every one of you for your time, um, and we wish you a beautiful day further. Thank you, and goodbye. Yeah. I'd just like to add that we are going to be sending um, a copy of this webinar to you all. And thank you so much, Mr. Kutza and the City of Cape Town for your input.